Okay, so let's go one step further and let's define convolution and Fourier transform for a distribution. And uh, yeah, um, for simplicity, we take omega to be Rn here. And in this case, we denote by D of omega just D. Okay, we want to define the convolution of a distribution and a function from D. And that should give us a function on Rn, and that should be in C infinity, but it doesn't have to be have compact support. Okay, let's uh, do as before. Um, of, um, we would like to define um, for for uh, for um, let's take Tf from D prime, and then we would like to define the function of that Tf. Uh, de define the convolution of that Tf with some function g. And of course, as before, we want to identify ti Tf with f. So that should be the same as f, the convolution of f and g. And this can in turn be interpreted as Tf of convolution, uh, T of uh, convolution of f and g. Okay, so there's only one way to define that convolution over here. Um, we uh, T, Tf convolution with G applied to some function phi should be equal to Tf convolved with G applied to some function phi. Now plugging in the definition of, uh, uh, of T, we receive that it's this over here. And uh, now plugging in the, um, the definition of F um, convolution of F and G, we arrive at this over here. Now, uh, defining this over here, g of x minus y, if we define th this as a gx of y, then this is now, a g and gx is a function on x. Okay, um, g has compact support. So by the way, even if f is not in L1, uh, this over here is uh, still well defined because g has compact support. Okay, um, now looking at this over here, we find uh, that this can be expressed as Tf of Gx. Okay, so now the whole function over here can be, um, can be written as, huh? can be written as T, Tf of Gx, evaluated at phi, again using the definition of t, and of course this is interpreted as tf of gx. So again there's only one way of defining that convolution so that it fits the normal, um, so that uh, it fits the more normal definition of the convolution, and we have to define the convolution of some distribution t with a g, uh, at some point x as t of jx, and of course this is now a function of x. Okay, uh, note that t of j, gx may have no compact support, and uh, that can easily be seen if you take f equals to one, then um, g, then this has no compact support if uh, g is does not happen to be um, the zero uh, completely vanishing function zero. Okay, um, as a short example, let's compute the uh, convolution of delta distribution and a function g evaluated at some point x. And this is delta of gx, so that's g of x minus argument. And uh, delta means evaluate the function at zero, so this is just g of x. So that means convolving a function uh, uh, with uh, the delta distribution gives back that function. So delta is the unity operator of the convolution. Okay, uh, and uh, something else which uh, is also very important in image processing. Now uh, define the translated uh, function gz by g of z plus x. 
And then um, we uh, compute the convolution, maybe classical convolution of some function f and some function gz, that function gz. That's now integral over r, f of x, g of z plus y minus x dx, and I've already plugged in the definition of gz. And uh, this is, of course, exactly the same as the convolution of f and g evaluated at some point z plus y. Uh, so this is just f uh, convolved with g translated, the argument translated by z. So in a way, this is translation invariant in the following sense. If we, trans if we uh, move g, uh, if we translate, if we shift the argument of G, then the result is that uh, well, the resulting um, um, the resulting function, the resulting um, convolution, is also shifted by Z. Now this property is called translation invariant, and it's something that you find very often in image processing. Just think of someone taking an image taking a picture, then if you shift the cam camera, then you would also expect that the image gets shifted. So uh, this is exactly what, uh, what, we, uh, um, what we're seeing here. We're shifting the image, uh, we're shifting the world, and that means we're getting a shift in the image. Okay, um, so... Um, it turns out that uh, all translation invariant operators are actually convolutions. And the question is, um, if you just have the operator, you are asking yourself what, what, that, uh, what the function is that defines that uh, convolution. And you can easily find it by just plugging in the delta distribution. So if you uh, plug in the delta distribution into the convolution, then you, of course, have g equals to delta convolved with g. So, um, so you can easily uh, take G just from the, if you just have the distribution, if you just have the convolution, and then you can determine G from that. Okay, uh, so convolution is fine. There is also a way of defining a convolution of two distributions, but we won't need it, so I don't do that here. Um, now, Fourier transform. Now we already know how uh, now now how to extend a definition from a function space to distribution space so uh, let me quickly go over this um, now uh, if we want to define the Fourier transform of TF well of course we, um, we identify TF with F so that should be the same as uh, the Fourier transform of F and that we identify with T Fourier transform of F. Okay, so uh, there's only one way of, uh, if we defined it correctly, then a tf hat of phi should be the same of tf hat of phi. And that's just integral over r, f hat of x, phi of x dx. And that's now with Plantarel, that's integral of f of x, phi hat of x dx. So that's tf of phi hat. Okay, so all we have to do to define the Fourier transform of a distribution is uh, we must define Fourier trans uh, t hat of phi as t of the Fourier transform of phi, and that's the only way we can uh, we can reasonably define that Fourier transform. Looks great, but it's complete nonsense. The problem is that phi has compact support, and unfortunately, um, one of the consequences I think of Paley-Wiener is uh, that uh, if phi and phi hat have compact support, then phi is completely zero. So um, there are, uh, that, that just means if phi is a non-trivial function with compact support, then, uh, and uh, in, it is in D, then um, its Fourier transform will not be in D. And that means that this, um, this definition over here is simply nonsense because phi hat is not a function with compact support. Okay, so to remedy that, uh, we have to find some different space of test functions for which the Fourier transform of uh, the test functions is also again um, a test function. And then this would th then this would be fine. And uh, this we will do now in the last chapter for today.